Ooh. APAC Pro, great access point, but a little old at this point. U6LR, I could go with that, but not really a fan of the LRs. U6 Professional. That could work. What's up guys, Jack here with MTS, and this is the U6 Professional. Let's talk about it. It's finally here, the long-awaited Wi-Fi 6 update to the widely loved APAC Pro. And oh my, is it an upgrade. Jumping right into the performance numbers, this thing is an absolute monster, getting just over 600 megabits per second when in the same room as my desktop, compared to the AC Pro's 250 megabits per second. Even three rooms away, it is still outperforming the Nano HD when the HD was only one room away. This thing is a monster when it comes to single client performance. It is, however, a major bummer though to see that they only put a single gigabit network jack on the U6 Professional instead of two and a half gig networking. Now on something like the U6 Lite, I can understand them putting a single gigabit network jack on that. That's the Lite series of access points. But on their professional series of access point, not having the ability to physically deliver enough bandwidth to this device to feed two clients at full speed is very disappointing to see. It's even more puzzling when you take a look at Ubiquiti's website and you see that they have two and a half gig switches that say four Wi-Fi 6 access points, but then they don't put a two and a half gig network jack on their professional series access point. Like, I don't even have the physical interface capacity to give two clients full speed. Which is a real shame, because they're advertising like five gigabit of throughput on this thing on the product page. So it's just, it's kind of mind boggling. But one of the things that they did do is remove the RGB LED. My beta version of the U6 Pro has an RGB LED, but my retail version doesn't. So we'll see that trend continue on things they took away. Physically, the U6 Pro is almost identical to the APAC Pro, with the exception of having a metal back on the U6 Pro versus the plastic back on the APAC Pro. They're the same dimensions, although the U6 Pro is a bit heavier, which is why it comes with the advanced mounting bracket in the box. Aside from the dimensions and the name, these two access points are wildly different tools, and I think that sparks a bigger discussion about where the industry of Wi-Fi and all this networking stuff is right now, because we're in a bit of a weird spot. Right now, the industry is in a bit of a weird spot. Everybody's currently trying to rush out their new Wi-Fi 6 access points, rather than taking a look at what the tools are that are currently in place and how can we make those tools better by adding something like Wi-Fi 6. And I think that really shows with something like the U6 Pro versus the APAC Pro. People ask me all the time, why are you deploying Wi-Fi 5 still when Wi-Fi 6 is out? And my general response is, okay, find me a source for 10 of these. You can't really do that in the, the, the current market that we're in right now with this big chip shortage. And so it comes down to utilizing the best tool for the job, the best tool that you have available to you. And that's something that you can do in a lot of different areas. Even just within tech, there's still a number of times where you could ask that question, why would you ever buy a laptop without a dedicated graphics card? Why would you ever buy a Mac? Oh my gosh, you're using this camera versus that camera? Oh, you're using this brand of cable versus that brand of cable? Why would you ever use that router? This router is so much better. What people fail to consider is that other people have different needs. And right now, Ubiquiti is the one that's failing to consider that. The APAC Pro is still a very powerful tool. And I'm going to reference the Virginia series of videos that I've done here on the channel because they really showcase where this access point shines. In a house where I can't run new lines, those lines are, you know, in brick and mortar walls that are going up multiple floors, going every which way. That is beyond my capabilities of running new cables. That would be ripping out ceilings, walls, everything just 
to get a second network jack there. And when you care about the aesthetic of your home, something like the basement of the house in Virginia, that's a great example where I'm running an APAC Pro because I only have a single network line, and then I'm using the secondary port to go into their TV. That's one of those use cases where the APAC Pro is really my only option. Yes, I could deploy a USW Flex or something like that, or have another network switch with a PoE injector and then network cables going everywhere, blah, 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 blah. But I can't run a second network jack in that house, so I have to use what I currently have available to me. And so being able to put in an APAC Pro and chain it out to their TV works really well. And that allows me to be the guy that says, yes, I can do this. Because a lot of other companies will just go in there and say, no, sorry, I can't make this look good. Or yeah, I could, but there'll be a little box here that has a network switch and some other things. I'm just like, I'll plug this in. And they were thrilled with the results. It is not ideal having a ceiling mount access point sitting on top of a media cabinet, but it's either the access point sits on top of the media cabinet or there's not an access point. And when you look at it like that, the right tool exists for the right job. And when Ubiquity goes and upgrades that tool but removes a lot of the features that make it a tool such as being able to have two gigabits of throughput by link aggregating these ports or using the the secondary port as a chain out to something else well this is no longer that same tool these two access points while they share the same dimensions and name or naming scheme are wildly different in how I would use them I would use this when I need a single client to have stupid good performance I would use this when I'm generally deploying it for a home. Because this access point, at least here in the US, our ISPs are pretty terrible. We don't have, you know, really fast internet. I've only worked with a handful of clients that have internet speeds over 500 meg in either direction. I happen to be fortunate enough now to live in an area where I have AT&T symmetric gigabit fiber to the home, which is pretty awesome. And so I could actually take advantage of a much faster access point. But for 95% of my clients, they will never have a speed bottleneck caused by an APAC Pro. And when I can buy these guys for dirt cheap by the hundreds, you're going to see me deploying the APAC Pro in a lot more places than I would ever deploy the U6 Pro. So it's really just disappointing to see. Because if all they had done was removed the secondary network jack, well, I would accept that as, okay, this is Ubiquiti's professional series access point, but they're gonna come out with something new in the future that's gonna have those secondary ports, that's gonna have two and a half gig networking, that's gonna have a 10 gig port, or something else. But when Ubiquiti does something small and stupid, like remove the RGB LED when they go to actually release the product, you know, in the release channel, well, it makes me kind of worried that that Ubiquiti is going away. That Ubiquiti that puts multiple network jacks on their access points. The Ubiquiti that makes products for very specialized use cases. Because this access point represents a lot more than just having a second port. It represents a product that is incredibly reliable, that is decent performance, that I can put in places that I can't put other products. And so this is the right tool for the job most of the time. The new one, I can't say the same thing about. But anyway, guys, thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and drop a like. If you really liked it and want to see more of me in your subscription feed, then you can go ahead and get subscribed. I'll have links down in the description of where you can pick up the U6 Pro. But let me know, do you agree with my statement and comparison about the U6 Pro versus the AP <laughs> words? But go ahead and let me know in the comments whether or not you agree with my comparison of the U6 Pro versus the APAC Pro. But anyway, guys, thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.